Hey, Decision Makers, today's episode is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to start a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Boom. Amazing right off the bat, right? Two, there's a creation tool that allows you to edit your recordings right on your phone or computer. If what has stopped you from starting a podcast is that you think it would be too complicated, Anchor makes it easy for you to publish your first episode today, even if you're not techie. Number three, Anchor will distribute your episodes for you at a click of a button. The moment I hit publish, I'm on nine different platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and many more. Number four, the other amazing thing about Anchor is that you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, meaning you can start making money from your podcast on day one. Anchor is everything you need to start a podcast in one place. With that being said, if you have ever wanted to start a podcast, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey, decision makers. Today's episode, we're talking about how the ketogenic diet can help you improve your sleep. Welcome to the Deep Dive into Health podcast, where each month we dive deep into a health topic such as sleep, productivity, sex, and diet, to name a few with the goal of becoming the best version of ourselves with daily interviews. Now, before we get started, repeat after me. I play all out. I see opportunities where others see impossibility. I contribute to something bigger than myself. I stay focused and take massive action. I am unstoppable. I am a decision maker. Hey, Decision Makers, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. If you haven't heard of Audible, it's the easiest way to listen to audiobooks. If you don't have an Audible account currently, you can get a free audiobook today and a 30-day free trial to Audible as well. If you don't like it, which I doubt it, you can cancel before the 30 days are up and still keep the book. Isn't that amazing? There's a huge range of titles available, but I highly recommend you read Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's the closest thing to a must-read. Learn an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. Audiobooks are a great tool. We're constantly on the move, right? Well, with Audible, there's no need to sit down. You can listen while you're driving, exercising, taking a shower, pretty much anything. My favorite is while I'm doing chores around the house, like cleaning dishes. I honestly now look forward to putting clothes away because it's my time to learn. Another great thing about Audible is the ability to listen across several devices without losing your spot. I don't know about you, but I hate when I lose my spot in my book. Get your free audiobook and start your free 30-day Audible trial by going to audibletrial.com backslash John. Once again, that's audibletrial.com backslash Y-O-H-N. All right, decision makers, before we kick into today's episode, I have a special gift just for you. For many years, I learned and learned. I would read books and take courses, but my life was still the same. Over and over, I would hear the quote, knowledge is power. And then one day I heard Tony Robbins say, knowledge is not power. And it hit me like a lightning bolt. Knowledge is not power. It's what you do with that knowledge and the actions that you take that will change your life. It took me years, but now I have an action taking system and my life has never been the same. I believe this will change your life too. Go get your free action taking system at johndiaz.com. Again, that's Y O H N. D-I-A-Z. Once again, that's Y-O-H-N-D-I-A-Z dot com and download your free gift. Oh, and you'll also receive a weekly email with a summary of what the episodes for that week are going to be all about. Maria Emmerich is a nutritionist who specializes in the ketogenic diet and exercise physiology. She struggled with her health and weight throughout childhood, which led her to become a passionate nutrition expert. Begin quote, my goal is to help transform people's lives and start living again, end quote. Maria specializes in brain neurotransmitters and how food can increase mental wellness. Her expertise has sent her across the world speaking about the ketogenic diet. And oh yeah, she cooks with people like Holly Berry. Maria, welcome to the Dive Deep Into Health podcast. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for reaching out. Oh, thank you for being on. And uh, Maria, what are you most grateful for right now? Oh, man, there are a lot of things. Um, A lot of people, you know, don't know me that are listening. Um, I, um, things might seem like they're great now, uh, but there was an extreme time where we lost our house and our, we had, we we had to sell our cars. 
Um, and we were in the process of adopting two children and that fell through because when you have a big job loss and you lose insurance, all the money you put into that adoption goes away wow. because you have to start over because they have to look into your new job and your new insurance. So there was a time when I was really low and this time of year, um, uh, it was right the day before Thanksgiving. I, huh, I don't want to cry on you already. <laughs> um, I came home with two little baby boys the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and so this time of year, I always get pretty emotional because it was a really hard, it was a really hard time in life. And um, seeing them grow up, they're now 10 and 11, and they're just, they make me happy every day. So what am I most grateful for? I'm really grateful for them. Oh, that's amazing. And anyone that's listening, I love to follow you on Instagram and see <laughs> how you do it with the kids. You cook different things. I see them eating desserts. It just looks like you guys have a bunch of fun. We do have fun. We made little Debbie cupcakes with, uh, we had Superman's birthday. I mean, with COVID, we're looking for fun things all the time. Uh, we already, my, so, my husband homeschools the kids. He has for years, not because of COVID. Um, and so we were always looking for like fun little things. And my son, he loves the superheroes. He's like, it's Superman's birthday. So I was like, oh, we better make him Little Debbie Cupcakes. So we did a YouTube video of it. We kind of make it fun. That's amazing. You're an amazing parent. And uh, oh, the next question, <laughs> of course, the next question is, what are you most excited about right now? What am I most excited about right now? Well, I have the great opportunity to work with Halle Berry um, and we have some projects coming up so everybody can keep watch for that. I can't talk about them, but oh. that's what I am most excited for. Oh, I can only imagine. It's funny because when I read the intro and that was the last part, I was like, I, I hope she knows at one point we're going to have to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Perfect. So the first way that we get into the podcast is to talk about your story. Now you're this keto expert that's traveling the world and talking to people about it. But I want to know your story. How did this all happen? Who were you before? Oh, my gosh, I was such a different person. Um, when I was 16 years old, I went to the doctor. I didn't even tell my parents I was going. I just knew something was wrong. I um, <clears throat> was diagnosed at that appointment with uh, PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, I left that doctor's appointment with four prescription drugs, an antidepressant, um, something for the PCOS. I had acid reflux, so I left with an acid blocker. And I also had IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. I was a mess. Um, I was also twice my size. Um, and my doctor, I got really upset because she said it was just the cards I was dealt. Mm. Uh, it was nothing I was doing wrong. But at the time I worked at a coffee shop where I lived off of mochas and whatever cinnamon roll and scone and muffin didn't sell that day went home with me. And I'm not kidding. I wouldn't go home with boxes of baked goods and that's what I was eating. So it was no wonder that I was sick. I mean, anybody, I mean, if you do, PCOS is really like blowing up right now. Um, I have a lot of clients with it, but if you don't know, PCOS is an insulin resistance problem. It's basically a type of type 2 diabetes. And when you get rid of the, the excess you know, carbohydrates, caffeine, and sugar, your body will start to heal. And it really was. It, it healed me. Um, but So that's where I started. And I went to school for nutrition and exercise physiology because I was always an athlete. I was just a, the big athlete, literally, you know? Um, so that's what I went to college for. And I met my husband when I was only 17 years old. Um, we didn't get married then, but um, we got married. I got, was married at a young age and all I wanted to be was a mom. Um, but I did, you know, go to school for nutrition. And uh, when he lost his job, I was like, wow, I better, <laughs> I better like do something about this. And, you know, because we, we did, we lost our house and we didn't, we didn't have any cars. And um, so, yeah, I just started my, my business. I started writing recipes. Um, when the adoption fell through, this is kind of cool. A friend of mine said, Maria, why don't you put your recipes together in a cookbook to help raise money for your adoption? Wow. And so I, so I did. And little did I know it went gangbusters, you it know, and that this, idea. Someone this just brought that, that up. Someone just brought that up. It was at the YMCA. Um, someone just told me because I was, you know, doing stuff there too. And um, 
yeah, so that's kind of where it all started. And it just, it went gangbusters. This was way before anybody heard the word keto. Um, and did I call it keto? No, it was basically just, you know, a low carb, maybe considered an Atkins type diet. But, um, I mean, now it's like super popular yes. and, uh, you know, it's just crazy. So how did, how did you end up following this type of diet? What made you, was it just from school and learning or how did you end up finding out that this was the best way? <laughs> well, it was when I was 16. So, um, 20, what, 23 years ago, you can do the math. Um, I, you know, when you research PCOS, this was before the internet. It clearly states excess carbohydrates and caffeine cause excess androgens. And the androgens, you want some, but too much is, you know, not a good thing. Um, and that would cause the PCOS. So I was like, wow, I really need to cut the carbohydrates out. And Atkins was pretty popular then. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so I need to cut the carbohydrates out and I have to cut caffeine out. I was like, okay, let's start with the, let's start with the carbohydrates and sugar first. And so, I mean, being a baker, I started just, you know, making some of my favorite things like the scones and the cinnamon rolls, just with different like exotic ingredients, which are pretty common to find. You can even find coconut flour at, you know, Costco now. Um, so it's not too weird now, but back then I was just kind of playing in the kitchen because I love to bake. I love to cook. Um, and so, so, yeah, I started a long time ago. College, they just told me the food pyramid. I mean, it's really sad what they taught. So I would work with other people that other doctors, um, you know, like Dr. William Davis of Wheat Belly, um, just like studying with him, um, finding out, you know, grains and sugar, what they do to our body and how unhealthy they are, how many anti-nutrients they have, um, was really like how I, I just started a long time ago. My, my passion for learning just, you know, I love it. Oh, I love that story. And it's funny because your story sounds a lot like mine. So it's really cool to hear it on the other end. Uh, yeah. But I would love to know, all right, so you at 16, you realize it's the carbs, the coffee, the sugar that you have to eliminate and you start taking things out or replacing them. What were some of the, the, the conflicts that you came along the route, right? Like oh, the <laughs> such a good question. The food pushers come out of the woodwork. Like you tell oh. someone that you're cutting carbohydrates and sugar and like your mom makes your, your favorite pie, you know? And so I, I mean, I lied. I said I had a gluten allergy because, you know, like a lot of people didn't know what gluten was. Um, you know, I just, it was in bread and pasta. And so that was my excuse not to have that type of stuff. Cause I mean, I'm a German girl that lives in, I grew up in, you know, the central Wisconsin where, you know, you live off of, you know, bread and pasta and all that. So people started making rice stuff and rice is gluten-free. And I was like, yeah, I can't have that either. <laughs> and so, you know, it was just, you know, I lied and said I had a food allergy and then I kind of brought the attention away from me rather than Maria doesn't eat bread and, you know, that type of stuff. Now I don't care. Um, but, you know, when I was a young girl, it was, I, I didn't want to bring attention to it. So, but yeah, I'm a stubborn German girl. So it's it just like the food pushers didn't really bother me. What's the biggest achievement that you've accomplished so far and who have you become on this journey? <laughs> The biggest, I mean, obviously, you know, the adoption of my kids was pretty like a big uh, accomplishment of mine. And I always go back to that. But, you know, it's little things like uh, when I get sent a message from Valerie Bertinelli that she loves my recipes. It's like you are she's a best selling cookbook author and she has my cookbook you know, um, or Al Roker making my recipe on the Today Show or Halle Berry um, sending me a message that she has all my books and that's how she, she's like, if it's one of your recipes, I know it's okay to eat it. And I'm like, wow, like that type of stuff, I mean, just sits in my heart forever. Oh, that's amazing. It's funny. It's funny you say that. I said this in yesterday's podcast episode and um, because I, I heard it, but it was you know, we, for, we always tend to look at the big things and forget the little things. And we don't realize that the little things are the ones that become the big things. It's like yeah. that seed that we plant and like little by little, but it's so important to go back and look at those little things. But I mean, those little things that you mentioned sound amazing, right? Like getting those messages. <laughs> yeah. Feel amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. We were actually watching, um, my kids and I like to watch Valerie Bertinelli's uh, kids baking competition. Mm -hmm. And we were watching that when she sent me a message and I showed it to my kids who were like, oh, oh my gosh, you know, that was so cool. You know, now, now I'm a cool mom, right? Of course. <laughs> That's awesome. Perfect. So, so Maria, the next section of the podcast is where we go into your teachings, right? And if you mm -hmm. could just give us about three to five uh, breakthroughs or insights that not only can help someone that maybe is going on that ketogenic diet or just yeah. understanding like how can the ketogenic diet help them improve their sleep and their health? Well, when you look at uh, the disease, I, I, uh, in my book, Keto, The Complete Guide to Success, I have the, the disease tree. And the disease tree, like you go down to the roots and all of the root causes of all of the diseases is inflammation, right? Inflammation is the cause of all disease. And what is the cause of inflammation? Excess sugar. And so everybody's like, well, Maria, I don't eat any sugar. But if you put a cracker in your mouth that doesn't have any sugar in the cracker, it breaks down into sugar in your bloodstream. So people don't often connect, you know, sugar and carbohydrates. So when you're eating like bread, when, you, when it gets into your bloodstream, it breaks down into simple sugars. That is what it does. Um, rice does the same thing. And whole grain bread has a higher glycemic index than white bread. So that's not a better thing. So what I want people to leave with is, you know, getting rid of sugar and getting rid of the carbohydrates will lower the inflammation. This will lower the pain. If you have joint pain, um, it will lower, I mean, whatever inflammation you're dealing with, gut pain, you know, only 8% of celiac disease truly heal when someone's really gluten allergic because they keep inflaming the gut with things like rice flour or rice pasta or rice bread. And rice bread, like rice flour has, I think 50 more grams of carbohydrates than white flour does. Mm. Um, so you have to really be aware of, that's turning into a, a lot more sugar once you enter it into your bloodstream. Um, and that carbohydrate turns into sugar and you get the sugar highs, and then you get the sugar lows. Sugar doesn't help with sleep. Some people think, oh, well, you need sugar for serotonin. That's actually the opposite. Um, you get, you know, and people, a lot of people recognize that when they are eating sugar and excess carbohydrates, they have a lot more depression. And that's because what goes up must come down. You know, that blood sugar goes up, and then it comes crashing down, and that's when you get the blues. And then you want to reach for more sugar. But if you keep, if you start the ketogenic diet, you don't have ups or downs. Your blood sugar stays nice and even keeled. So you get hungry, but you don't get hangry. I remember this, you know, like that lunchtime is coming when you're in school or work or whatever. And you're like, oh, don't talk to me. I'm, not, I'm super hungry, right? That doesn't happen. You get a little bit of hunger, but it's not like you're so hungry you can't handle it. Um, some people end up intermittent fasting, which is very good because when you're not constantly feeding your body, you give it time to rejuvenate other cells. Um, it's really good for cancer. Um, it's really good for so many benefits. Um, just getting, letting your body take the time to heal other parts of its cells. But if you're always eating two hours, you know, every two hours, your body can't ever really rejuvenate its cells and heal itself. Um, so when it comes to sleep, the thing that you think about tryptophan, you know, everybody eats turkey, you know, oh, the tryptophan makes you tired. That's true. So when you start, you know, when you're doing a ketogenic diet, you, you know, I su suggest focus on animal protein that has, you know, tryptophan. Eggs are actually a really good thing to have closer to bedtime because it has the most amount of melatonin in it um, to help with proper sleep. Um, so if you think about like foods with tryptophan, it would be turkey, but it's usually animal protein that helps with that, that sleepiness. Um, but also that, that increases serotonin, which is your mood, um, which helps with appetite the next day. If you're like a sugar fiend, um, and I was too, like there's no judging <laughs> in my life. So I'm not trying to, you know, 
criticize anyone for being a sugar, you know, burner because I was myself. Um, but making those baby steps to get the sugar out is huge. And that's why I write recipes for little Debbie cupcake without the sugar or the carbohydrates. Um, but when you go to the internet and you search the keto diet, my, my second big tip is to be very careful what you read because yes. there was, you know, um, you know, 20 years ago when I was the only one speaking this or not the only one, but I, now there's so much bad information. I end up banging my head against the wall. Like, um, you know, add more fat, you know, don't eat too much protein. Protein turns into sugar. Um, all of, you know, all of this stuff, you know, chicken does not turn into chocolate cake. Let's just get that clear. It's a, de <laughs> it's a demand driven process. Um, most people, especially women are under eating protein, especially if they do a ketogenic diet that they hear online, they have to eat more fat, less protein. Um, they'll end up losing their hair, all of this. So do it properly. I do have a free calculator that helps with macros on my website. Um, but that's, that's a huge pitfall that people do. Um, the, another thing about sleep is with women, I, d I, I suffered with sleep for a really long time because of PCOS and the hormone imbalances. And when women, whether they have PCOS or they're going through uh, menopause, um, I see girls that are 20, not dealing with menopause, deal with sleep issues where you can fall asleep, but you can't stay asleep. So you're up at like 2 a.m. like, bing, I'm totally awake. This often happens after having a child. Um, and it's the whole low progesterone. And that low progesterone, you can often fall asleep, but it's, it's terrible sleep. You are up a lot or you're up at, you know, 2 a.m. like, bing, I can't fall back asleep. Um, and it's very frustrating. And there's a couple very natural supplements that I always recommend. I wrote about it on my website. Um, I write about it in my books because not getting good sleep. What's interesting is there's a lot of studies that they do, have done on army rangers and all they changed was what they let them sleep, the amount of sleep they got. They didn't change their food at all. And after three nights of only six hours of sleep, their cells started to look like a type two diabetic. Mm -hmm. And so their, you know, their blood sugars were very high despite what they ate. And I see this all the time with clients. If you're not getting good sleep, you can be eating a, a very wonderful ketogenic diet and still have high blood sugars, have terrible cravings, have terrible moods. I mean, sleep is really important. I used to wake up way too early to make sure to get my workout in. And now I prioritize sleep. If I don't have time for both, sleep takes over for working out early in the morning. Because, and by practicing that, I've gotten leaner, I've gotten stronger. And it's it, sleep, so many hormones are balanced. Um, your moods will get better with sleep. Um, yeah, it, it's really, really important to get good sleep and wow. i wear my blue blockers every night I yes mean, I, have good, <laughs> I, I have the good quality ones that block the red and the green and the blue light or whatever you need um because i used to use the cheap blue blockers and i'm like they don't work um but yeah they work really well especially when you know you and i were on you know the computer all night right yeah so Oh, that's amazing. No, that was, I mean, you gave me a great, great amount of great tips there. Thank um, you. Yeah, the 8% with the celiac, never heard that before. That was, that was impressive. And the same thing with the soldiers. So understanding that, like just three days in your cells change, like that's amazing. And um, especially with, with younger people, all right? I feel like you're always kind of hearing that you have to like hustle or you have to work hard and you have to put yeah. your sleep to the side. And um, I, I know when I changed from being a night person to being a morning person, like yeah. my life changed dra drastically. Yeah. I, I mean, I've always been a morning person. I've heard it's easier for a night owl be, to become a morning person versus a morning person to become a night owl. I, you know, I'm in, I'm in bed early, but I'm up before the birds working. And that's because, you know, like I told you, we've always homeschooled the kids. So if I want quiet time at home, I've got to work before anybody wakes up. Um, but I, I really like that. I always have, I was always up working, making the muffins at the coffee shop and stuff. So it doesn't really bother me, but, um, yeah, I mean, 
prioritizing sleep, not only it's going to help with your moods, it's going to help with your energy output too. I mean, I feel I get a lot more work done, even though I sleep nine hours a night because I, you know, I can hammer it hard really all day. I'm, I don't, I don't need a nap. I don't need that time to sit down. I'm, I'm on my feet all day long, you know? Well, with that being said, just the energy side of it, right? I remember the first time that I felt like I went into like ketosis and I remember like my brain just kind of like turning <laughs> on. It just, it felt like I, there was so many things that I wasn't aware of at first. And that's like, now I could focus and pay attention to where I wanted to put my energy. And that was like a big thing for me. It was yep. like, wow, if I can focus my energy mm -hmm. and I can, and I can be more effective and more productive, that's amazing. Um, right. So like, like, right. Cause the brain does some such amazing things if you take care of it. Right? It and does. It really, really does. And like, I want to touch on two things, vegetable oils, but first of all, the whole idea of being in ketosis. If you think about all of the greats of our, you know, our centuries, you know, Gandhi, Buddha, Jesus, no matter yes. what your religious religion is, even Benjamin Franklin, they all fasted. And fasting actually gets you into ketosis. When you're not digesting food, you get into ketosis. What's a better way to get into ketosis? You know, don't eat the carbohydrates, right? Because, you know, you're not, you know, really hungry. But anyway, um, they all fasted because that's where their mental clarity came from. You know, so intermittent fasting paired with a ketogenic diet is huge for mental clarity, um, peace with your mind, anxiety, depression. It's really good for all of those types of things. But I do want to touch on, you can do the ketogenic diet with proper macros, like I told you, the fat, protein, very low carbohydrate, but you could be damaging your brain and your cells really bad if you're doing vegetable oils. And where are vegetable oils found in? They're found in Kraft Mayo, Hellman's Mayo, um, any salad dressing you get at a restaurant or um, uh, the, the grocery stores. Um, they're going to be found in, I mean, any if you look at canola oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, all of those things, and there's even keto so-called products with those in it, uh, protein bars that have it in there. You change the structure of your cells so they no longer talk like they should. And weight loss will be almost non-existent when you eat those. Um, your moods will you know, suffer, MS. I mean, all of these when your cells start to become plastic, that's when a lot of big issues happen. I'm glad you said that because I haven't heard a lot of people mention that, right? Nobody so I... talks about it. <laughs> because, well, you look on Instagram and people are going to like In-N-Out Burger and getting the, what are those called? Those burgers um, that, I don't know what they're called. They call it like the double burger, the double, the, I don't know, the animal style, yeah. whatever it is. They fry them in vegetable oils, you know? And then they put the cheese in there that has the, the bad fats in them too. So to me, yeah, they're eating so-called keto, but it's not that. And then they put a bunch of mayo all over it that, you know, Hellman's or whatever it is, mm -hmm. not to name drop products, but <laughs> like, you just really have to be aware. And what's funny is one of my clients, the magazine is back here um, on Women's World Magazine. She's on the cover. She lost 300 pounds. And on the cover, it says, um, you know, she lost, you know, 300 pounds on ultra keto. And I was like, when is eating real food ultra keto? <laughs> you know, as if it was some weird thing. It's like, no, we just eat real food. We don't eat. Whenever something comes out of package, think twice, people. Think twice. Yes. Now into the last part. Actually, right before we get into the last part of the podcast, there was one quote that I saw that you had that I loved and I would love to talk about. And yeah. it was, um, you are not what you eat. You are what you absorb. And I would love yeah. to hear a little more about you ex explaining that. Uh, this is, this kind of goes deep. Um, my husband was diagnosed with Lyme disease and uh, he probably had it for, I don't know, five or so years before we even knew what it was. And then he had to go on like three rounds of antibiotics and they were really powerful. Well, it damages your gut a lot. And a lot of people are on antibiotics all the time or they have a damaged gut from celiac or inflammation in general, right? Um, when you eat food, if you're not absorbing it, you're not benefiting from any of the magic if you're eating healthy, you know? Like you could be taking a magic pill but if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid to absorb it, 
you can't benefit from any of the magic. Um, and hydrochloric acid declines with age, it just does. If you take acid blockers, guess what? It's taking it all away. And when you have acid reflux, it's usually not enough hydrochloric acid, not too much. But the doctor's gonna tell you, oh, it's too much, puts you on acid blocker, which is interesting because when I work with uh, clients in Europe, they're never on an acid blocker for longer than two weeks. But here, we give it to babies. If a baby has acid reflux, oh, let's give him an acid blocker. Oh, that one's not working, let's put another one on top of that. That is killing their intestines to the point where I had a man client a couple of years ago who was on acid blockers for 18 years and his intestines looked like Swiss cheese. Oh, wow. You can't absorb anything like that and it's almost impossible to heal. So, I really want people to, I get a little like saddened when people don't realize the input equals the output. It really does. You don't put, you know, diesel fuel into a gas engine, but we're doing that to our bodies every day. Oh, Marie, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That was beautiful. I loved how you, especially this. Input equals the output. That was, it that does. was perfect. That was so great. <laughs> uh, now, with the last section of the podcast, it's just a lightning round. I have a few questions. I try to awesome. answer everything within, an, within a sentence. Okay. Cool. All right, perfect. So what's your favorite quote? Um, and it doesn't have to be oh, health-related or anything. Um, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You're so funny. I'm telling you, I, yesterday on the podcast, I had someone mention the same exact thing. Yeah, uh, that's deep. <laughs> that is deep. I love it. Perfect. And um, what book has had the biggest impact in your life and why? Uh, it, it sounds weird, but A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. And why? Um, it's about hiking the Appalachian Trail. And I'm a big nature lover. And I hiked the Colorado Trail after uh, reading that. So. It was oh, pretty big. Yeah. That inspired you to go on the, on the trail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for oh, sure. That's amazing. Oh, I love that. All right. And we got two more. Knowing everything that you know now, what advice would you love to go back and give yourself when you were first starting this journey? <sighs> Don't be such a planner. I, I tried to plan my whole life. And here I am with, you know, two adopted children, a job I never thought I would ever have. I was going to be, a, a, you know, a homeschool and mom. And here, you know, I'm working with celebrities and like, I don't sweat the small stuff and just like things do come together, even though like you want to hear God laugh, tell him what you have planned, you know, <laughs> because it's so true. I was planning, 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 and none of it happened. But you guess what? It's way better than what I ever planned. Oh, that's amazing. And now the last one is what's the one question you currently ask yourself the most? Why didn't I aim higher? Oh. Like my, you know, I, I wanted to just be a homeschooling mom. And if I would have, you know, gotten my doctorate with nutrition, I feel like I would have gotten more respect in this community, having that title doctor, whether they know more than I do or not. Um, I wish that I would have kept going in school and not been like, nope, I'm going to be a mom. I want my, I want my education, but I want to be a mom. And I just stopped continuing school and i wish that i would have just aimed higher wow no that's great and um it's funny too because just seeing it from your perspective too like when you were just starting off and no one was talking about this the the title yeah. would have right but now we're we're in a world where like social media is so big and yeah you have the following you don't necessarily need the titles anymore but no. um but it would have helped you at the beginning i could totally see that yeah Perfect, perfect. And now this is the last part of the podcast. Maria, where can we find out more about you? Uh, where can we learn about you? Where can we learn about your cookbooks and stuff? Share with that stuff with you. us. Well, hey, I told you we were out of a uh, house and cars, so I get it. I have thousands of free recipes at mariamindbodyhealth.com. Um, I also have a website, keto-adapted.com, uh, where I help people privately, um, do phone consultations, um, I am also on Instagram at Maria Emmerich, or I have a Facebook uh, group called Keto Adapted also. 
everyone i'll make sure to add all those things to the thank uh, you to the show notes please go and follow maria she has amazing stuff i love to see her being outdoors i saw her with the bow and arrow earlier today too <laughs> like she's doing some crazy fun stuff but with that being said maria thank you so much for being with us today thank you so much all right decision makers i hope you enjoyed this interview with maria emmerich as much as i did these were my top three takeaway action items that i would love to share with you guys one is realize what the root cause and try to dive into the root cause of your of your pain or lack of sleep or whatever the case is dig into the root cause so you actually don't put a band-aid on the thing you actually heal the thing or you're actually addressing the right proper the proper thing right i hope that makes sense right the second thing that i took from it was how can i eliminate sugar where in my life can I eliminate sugar and how can I start looking at those things and um yes you mentioned the less inflammation you have the better you're gonna feel the better sleep you'll have and different things right and the last and third thing that I took was how can I prioritize sleep so that um I, I allow my body and my mind to heal the way that it's meant to be all right so with that being said guys I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I do once again I I highly recommend that you guys head over to Maria mindbodyhealth.com and just see the free resources and all the things that she has on her website but with that being said decision making Hope you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't take your time lightly and I appreciate that you made the decision to listen to the podcast today. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the show. And finally, please take a minute to rate and review the podcast. Once again, thank you for listening. And remember, you are a decision maker and you are just confidence away.